friends welcome to a cozy writing video where i am planning out my next novel for those of you who are new here hello my name is kim i am a writer illustrator and here on my channel i love to share all things about books writing and lifestyle so today i bring you a cozy writing video where i am just planning out my next novel now my first book my first debut book is coming out in May 21st and that is more so a sort of self-help workbook very interactive with poetry, rituals, illustrations and I'm very excited for that book. However, I have always dreamed of writing my own novel and the more I read and get lost in stories, the more I am honing in to what kind of story I want to tell. And I always knew that I wanted it to be a fantasy storyline and I wanted it to be very much connected to my culture. I am Mexican American and so I really want this to be connected to my Mexican and indigenous roots. So I have been planning out and writing a whole bunch of ideas and concept for like the last year. And and I get really frustrated sometimes with myself because I seem to have all these ideas which I think are pretty good <laughs> but I don't I'm not great at putting action towards those ideas and actually crafting a sort of rubric and storyline of how I can successfully execute and tell this story this is what this video is going to be about it's going to be about actually putting steps forward into plotting out my entire storyline now this is going to be my first per se novel being told in this way but this is going to be my first time ever writing fantasy like this it's a little scary i feel like i am touching very new territory but i am a strong believer that it is not impossible that if you feel very passionate about something then you can for sure do it i am in dire need of doing what i'm doing right now of plotting out out my next novel of writing and feeling like I am going at a steady pace because the last few weeks I have been feeling very hopeless very unmotivated and I feel that is because a lot of my energy has been going towards other projects and these are projects that just that need to get done in my life but I haven't really been doing anything that I feel I am that gets me excited and for me writing and being a storyteller and executing all these stories that live in here is something that make me feel very hopeful and I just haven't been doing a lot of that I haven't really been doing a lot of things that I I would say inspire me that I would say keep me feeling hopeful for the kind of life I want to live and I just find it super dire and necessary to be able to make space to do and to plan out to execute the things that make us feel alive that make us feel wonderful with that being said friends I want to share with you a book that I have been studying that has been very helpful so far as far as crafting a storyline for a potential book and that is this book right here it is called The Anatomy of Story by John Truby. I've only read the first couple of chapters that explain to you like what all goes into crafting a storyline and how you can get started. It can be quite overwhelming because it's a lot of information and the way my brain works I just want to tackle it all at once but I figured that the best way that I can go about adapting these notes into my own story is by going chapter per chapter so reading a chapter adapting it and putting uh, what I learned to use into my story and then so forth go to the second chapter and do the same considering I already highlighted the first I want to say two chapters I'm going to adapt these notes into my story and see how that goes so I'm gonna take you guys along for the next few days while I try my best to adapt the first few chapters into my actual storyline in hopes that that I can start developing the story that lives in my head into a tangible and physical in the near future book. The goal is to spend at least one to two hours every morning for the next maybe three or four days reading from this book and adapting it to my story. So that's going to be the goal in this vlog. Today is day one. So, so far, like I mentioned, I have outlined the first two chapters of this book. So whatever I outline, I'm going to go ahead and adapt into my story and see what comes of it see how it's working for me and then I'll touch base with you guys again in a little bit. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so I'm at the part where, where it's, it's actually the first step and that is to create your premise. So apparently the premise is the story stated in one sentence and it should be the simplest combination of character and plot and typically consist of some event that starts the action, some sense of the main character and some sense of the outcome of the story, all within it just being one sentence. I think before I even dive into outlining everything that needs to go into story structure i first need to really hone in to the story i want to tell and i am quite in a pickle right now because i have i want to say maybe like three stories that i already started that i'm having a hard time choosing and i'm trying to figure out if these should all be individual stories that i will gradually write one day or if these have the potential of being lump summed into one story that makes sense for them to be combined into one. I, like I mentioned, have so many ideas that sometimes is very, which is really frustrating just honing into one story because there's it's just there's just so many amazing stories that come into my mind that I want to tell. So I guess I'm just having a hard time figuring out what story that is. The first story that I want to write, I have so many, but right now, like the two biggest ones that I probably already have more of an idea of what I want them to be about. One of them, I'm calling it Project Witch. <laughs> that story, trying to pitch it as Kiki's Delivery Service meets Over the Garden Wall. I really love the coziness of Kiki's Delivery Service, uh, the movie from Studio Ghibli, and also Over the Garden Wall, which is a series. It was like one season and it was, I want to say like eight episodes maybe. It's one of my all time favorite shows ever and I love the eeriness, I love the spookiness of it and I also love the coziness of, of Kiki's Delivery Service. So I have been working on a storyline where it, it's like Kiki's Delivery Service meets over the garden wall. So I have that one and that's supposed to be more of a cozy sort of murder mystery. And then I have another one that is called, I'm calling it Project Casa Sempasuchil, which is House of Marigolds. And I do want this to be more aimed towards like, in my culture, Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, but I'm calling it Casa Sempasuchil for some reasons that I want to reveal just yet. These don't sound like they would mesh well together, or at least I haven't found a combining thing that would join these two different storylines into one. So I think these should probably be separate stories themselves, but I guess I'm just having a hard time choosing which one I want to tell first. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I have a, a pretty okay grasp onto what these are going to be. I actually have another one. I have another story, or is it this the same one? Oh my gosh, guys, no. Okay, so actually my graphic novel project, it's called Graphic Novel Project, that one is Over the Garden Wall meets Kiki's Delivery Service. And then my Project Witch is a whole other story that has to do with Alebrijes, which is a folklore animal in my Mexican culture. So that's a whole other one. So actually I have three different stories that I'm trying to figure out if they can be meshed together or if these should just be all separate individual storylines. And if so, then which one do I want to work on first? I have some thinking to do on what could be developed based on, or what would be more accessible to be developed based on the guide that I'm following. I'm hoping that I can choose by today and at least try and get the premise done today. Try and get the, I think the next thing that follows in this guide is to create your premise first, then you do the seven key story structure steps, then you do some character development and then theme, moral arguments and so forth. So I'm hoping I could at least get two of these things done today. That way tomorrow I can start fresh in the morning and continue developing whatever story I choose to go for.
Okay, I've made a little bit of progress as far as the premise goes. So per the book that I am studying of story structure, it says in order to develop a premise, it gives us two tactics here, is to make a wish list of story interest. And it's just basically just jotting down all the elements that you see or you would want for your story to have. I made a long list of story interest that I would love for my story to encompass, to have. I wrote like a cozy panaderia, which is a bakery. Um, I want it to be a mystery, maybe even a murder mystery. I'm not sure about the murder, but definitely a mystery. I definitely wanted to have magical elements. I want it to be revolving around witches. And then also in particular, I want this to be revolving around alebrijes. And I guess in English, those are called shapeshifters. By the way, actually, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I am deciding to go with the project graphic novel, even though this is not gonna be a graphic novel, I do wanna create some illustrations for this book. Maybe it could be one of those books where it has illustrations inside, but not the entire story is all illustrated. So maybe I can go in that route, but I, I am deciding to go with the over the garden wall meets Kiki's delivery service with a little bit of dash of Coco, the Disney movie. So I'm trying to combine all of these elements together and make a story that I have in here that I want to tell. I am still thinking of adding the Casa Sempasuchil project, the the House of Marigolds project into this storyline, but maybe it could be in the same world, but it maybe in the future Casas and Basuchil can be its own story. Um, but maybe I could give little hints of that in here. We'll see. I think who does this? I think uh Brandon Brandon Sanderson, yes, Brandon Sanderson does this a lot where he gives of hints in his stories of other stories within one story that is not even revolving around that particular story that you're reading. So he connects all of the, the books that he writes within each individual stories, if that makes sense. So I really love that idea of giving, living, leaving behind little pockets of eggs into one individual story that will then tie it to a different story that is solely like a standalone story. That's kind of where I'm at. It might be a lot, but in my head it's making sense according to where I'm going with this. So as far as my wish list goes, I do want this to focus on, well, first and foremost, I find that writing things from your own personal experience really helps make the story come more alive and it also makes it more personal meaning that you have a deeper connection meaning that you are writing from a place of truth and already knowingness like you you've been through this so you already know so therefore you have that experience as to why you're going to be writing this so I do want this to include topics of generational trauma and then also the older sibling syndrome. I'm an older sibling and there is a particular upbringing that older siblings have that is unique to theirs. And I wanna write from that perspective. I definitely wanna make my main character the older sibling in this family. I also want elements of spookiness and eeriness. Maybe magic is selective. Only some family members get the magic gene. I don't know. I really like that idea i do want this to be like a coming of age story also some love interests maybe i do want there to be themes of anxiety and panic attacks again familiars aka the cambia formas which i have a unique way i'm thinking of how i'm going to tie these familiars being the alebrijes which are the cambia formas i'm probably not making sense right now but in my head you guys in my head this 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 is gonna work out okay i'm hoping i do want the setting to be like in a cozy town i do want there to be street vendors this street vendors are very big in my culture and i have a deep appreciation for street vendors i grew up in a family where you know as a first generation mexican daughter like i grew up in a household where my parents had to rely on only particular jobs considering that they were undocumented to be able to work here in the States. So I grew up going with my parents and helping them when they were like either street vending or they would go to local flea markets and they would sell. And it was just that kind of world that I grew up in. And that, that is something that I'm very passionate about. And I want to tell a story from that perspective and make my character or create my character, write my character from that perspective as well. And I do want it to be witty and fun with hints of coziness and mystery. I made my wish list, okay? That is what this is. That's my wish list. And then, according to the book that I am studying, the next thing to do is to write a variety of different 
premises. They say you can write up to 25, but the goal here is to just see all the possible ways that this story that you have up here could potentially go in. I wrote, I wanna say I have maybe like four premises so far, but I wanna share what I kind of have so far with you guys and where I might be going with this story. So the first one that I wrote is, when the oldest daughter of a family from a long line of cambiaformas, shapeshifters, inherits the family bakery, she gives up her powers to run the establishment after her parents died. That is until her younger sister goes missing. That's one of them. And these are all kind of going to sound the same, but they're a little bit different in some areas. So the next one is, when the oldest daughter from a long line of witches doesn't inherit the family magical gene, she sets off to start a bakery in a town no one has ever heard of. That's the second one. The third one that I have here is, when her younger sister goes missing, Magia, my character, must leave her bakery shop behind and travel to the last place her sister was last seen at, a place no one has ever heard of. So those are like the only premises that I have so far. And I guess the goal here is to look at all of your wish list, like all of the elements that you created a wish list that you would like for your story to have and sort of play around with them to create your premise and make a whole bunch of premises, member of premises, a, a one sentence that really encompasses everything that your story is about. It's a lot harder than it seems. So that is the goal. And it really does help out having a wish list and then from there create all of these different premises to see what comes up to see how in how many ways can your story go in with that being said friends I'm gonna continue working on my premises and hopefully I'll I don't know maybe I'll touch base with you guys tomorrow and see what I have Welcome to day two of trying to write my story or at least get the outline of this story that's been engraved in my head onto a proactive story structure. I have been doing some great progress. I put my alarm to be working on this for an hour. So far, I still have 26 minutes left on my timer. Yesterday, I was able to set in stone what story it is that I'm gonna go for. That's usually the hardest part for me is that I have so many ideas and it's hard to hone into one particular idea and tell myself, okay, this is the one you're gonna work on. But this feels really good and I've been able to expand more considering that this is more of a cozy fantasy. Um, it does, or at least more of a fantasy mystery. I do want it to have some relevant elements that are true to my experience as a first generation because that's important for me and I want my books to have those themes. I now have more of a clear understanding of where the story is going. I was able to sort of work out a premise, that was the first step, and then I was able to work out challenges and problems that are going to eventually lead to what my main character or my main characters, I'm not sure yet, are going to have to overcome in this story. Also yesterday I was able to work on what is called the design principle and per the book, the design principle is given the problems and the promises inherited in your idea, you must now come up with the overall strategy for how you will tell your story. Your over 
overall story strategy stated in one line is the designing principle of your story. The designing principle helps you extend the premise into deep structure. And then like a little key point that they mentioned here is the design principle is what organized is the story as a whole. It is the internal logic of the story, what makes the parts hang together organically so that the story becomes greater than the sum of its parts. It is what makes the story original. So I'm still working on this part, the design principle for my story, but so far I kind of have this. A young girl finds her voice and unlocks her powers during a voyage to a realm where all magic was believed to be mere fantasy. So that's overall my design principle. Obviously there is a lot more that is going to go on, uh, but it, I, I would say this is the central thing that is going to lead my entire story. I'm gonna have, have my character take a voyage to a realm that ha that she's only heard of in stories from her mother her grandmother uh, while growing up. It is a made up story or a made up place where she now has to travel to because her sister has gone missing and this is the place where she last heard she was at. That's kind of where I'm going and that's what I have so far for my design principle. Now yesterday I also worked on some of my main characters or characters that are going to be in my story so I have that. Now today what I have been working on is the central conflict in my story as well as the cause and effect. Per the book, the central conflict is, it says here, once you have an idea of who will drive the story, you want to figure out what your story is about at the most essential level. That means determining the central conflict of the story. To figure out the central conflict, ask yourself who fights whom over what? And answer the question in one line, one sentence. So for my central conflict, I'm still working it out, okay? This is kind of what I have so far. My main character must confront the evil person's intent on eliminating all immigrants in this land in order to prevent further displacement of those seeking refugee. Now I would say that this is I guess the main conflict that's going on behind the scenes opposed to all the other conflicts that are going to be presented in front of this main conflict. I want this to be the main conflict that's going to be happening in my story. I guess I should say that I do want this book even though it's going to be you know mystery fantasy even with a pinch of coziness i do do want this to have a little bit of more like i mentioned earlier bigger themes and one of my biggest themes on here that i wanted to have is that i do want to write about displacement and so i want to write in a way in a fantasy-ish way about what that would look like in a fantasy world obviously taking inspiration from our real world especially with immigration and undoc on documentation yeah that's kind of where i'm at with the central conflict now the cause and effect the cause and effect per the book says every good organic story has a single cause and effect pathway a leads to b which leads to c and so on all the way to z this is the spine of the story and if you don't have a spine or you have too many spines your story will fall apart. And they give several examples here. For example, one of these, through the love of a good woman, that's the cause, a man defeats his brother for control of a winery, and that's the effect. So my cause and effect that I'm still sort of working out right now is after a young woman's sister disappears, which is the cause, she embarks on a journey to a distant land that exists only in legends, the same place where her sister was last known to have ventured to and that is my effect. That's kind of what I'm working with so far. I'm doing great progress. I would say I feel really good about my story. I feel like the more I work on it, the more it makes me feel so good about where this story is going. So I'm gonna continue working on this for the next maybe 20 minutes or so, and then, I don't know, get back to you guys, maybe tomorrow, and uh, see what else, see what else we're doing here. <laughs> Hello friends, it is the next day and I thought I was going to be able to film more but after getting through the last bit of the chapter that I was currently studying to start structuring out the story that I had here in my brain, there wasn't that much more to film because I pretty much covered for the most part whatever that chapter was about. I think I last updated you guys on the cause and effect step that I did on, by following this book but after that I had to work through the next step on after the cause and effect which was character change. Now the character change is step eight in the book that I am following. I don't think I even mentioned it on this 
vlog but I'm currently on chapter 2 and I am following the steps on chapter 2 so the next step after the cause and effect was the character change it says here after the designing principle which is sort of the cause and effect rubric the most important thing to glean from your premise line is the fundamental character change of your hero this is what gives the audience the deepest satisfaction no matter what form the story takes even when the character change is negative so the character change is what your hero experiences by going through their struggle so for me I had to kind of work through that they give you a sort of graph on here I forgot what those are called so they say that weakness times struggle equals changed person so it says here in the vast majority of stories a character with weaknesses struggles to achieve something and ends up changed positively or negatively as a result the simple logic of a story works like this how does the act of struggling to do the basic action which is a leads the character to change from W to C. So W meaning weakness and then C meaning character change. And the little key point on here says the basic action should be the one action best able to force the character to deal with their weakness and change. So for example for me my main character Magia is going to be a character who is insecure, who has low self-confidence, who is a very sort of complacent person in this world. She follows the rules to the T and the action that she's going to to take that might alter who she is is she's going to be forced to go look for her missing sister and along this journey she is going to change for the better or for the worse so the the changed person for me I, I don't want to say but she's going to change after this experience it's a good thing to I suppose note of ahead of time because you want that to be portrayed in your story and to keep in mind as you're writing your story I really love that exercise of you know starting to think about the traits that your character is going to have who how they're going to be and in most cases yes you start off with your main character being this one particular person but at the end of the book at the, when the reader is done reading that book that character should not be the same they should be different whether it is good or bad but you don't want the same character from the beginning of your story or the your main character to be the same towards the end of your story they should for sure be changed in one way or another and then I believe step like I think nine was that the the character has to make a moral choice. So it says here, the central theme of a story is often crystallized by a moral choice the hero must make, typically near the end of the story. Theme is your view of the proper way to act in the world. It is your moral vision and it is one of the main reasons you're writing your story. So basically towards the end usually of your story, the main character has to make some sort of choice, whether they're going to continue in the path that they're on or something different is going to happen. I already know what that's gonna be for my main character because my character is someone who has always been complacent in this world and this very oppressive world my character is going to have to make a decision whether she continues to be complacent or she is going to take action towards fighting for some sort of justice that I've built in this world so those were the two last things that I last worked on and I feel so much better after having gone through the first couple of steps that in, are indicated in chapter two of this book the next thing that is on chapter three it says here the seven key steps of story structure I need to read through this chapter and see what is next as far as you know adapting whatever I'm learning and putting it into my story so I think that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna read the chapter and then before I read more I want to then adapt it to my story so I'm gonna be going back and forth I read a chapter and then adapt it to my story because I feel like it's gonna be super overwhelming reading all of this and making a whole bunch of notes and then going back and then adapting it to my story I'm very excited I feel so much better about my story structure. I feel like I have more of a clear idea of where this story is going and I just cannot wait to continue sharing this journey with you guys. That is if you guys want to please let me know down in the comments below you guys if you guys want to continue seeing these kinds of videos and watching along as this story further develops. I personally love watching writing videos and seeing authors get excited about their stories and further develop their stories and see all the twists and turns that their story ends up taking. I'm going to link this book down below I got mine from Amazon so if you also want to get this it'll be available for you guys to check out down below I really hope that you enjoyed this video friends please remember that you can create the life that you want because you so deserve it I appreciate you so much thank you so much for being here and I will be seeing you in the next one bye for now